to begin. Mexican photojournalist Ruben Espinosa has been laid to rest after being fatally shot on Friday along with four others. Now the case has sent shockwaves through Mexican society as all five victims showed signs of being tortured before being killed. For more now on what is currently a battle to maintain not just human lives but freedom of the press in that country, we bring you this report from our correspondent Clayton Kahn. The grief and anger was not just expressed by the family of photojournalist Ruben Espinosa, murdered last Friday with four other women, but also by his colleagues and friends. Our family is proud of him, and he will always live on for us, and we hope for you all, you journalists, photographers, those who work in the media, he also lives on for you, and you can learn from his courage. And while many critical journalists say they are willing to take risks to publish the truth, others have turned to self-censorship, reminded by the 103 media workers killed since 2000 with many of their cases left unsolved. And this impunity is so that one doesn't say anything, to quiet all voices and to be against the right to information. That is the main motive. Since 2010 in the volatile state of Veracruz, 14 journalists alone have been killed, pointing to corruption between the government and organized crime. While the family, friends and colleagues of Espinosa say that he was their eyes in seeing truth, they now say that they will be his voice in demanding justice. This past weekend, journalists protested in Mexico's major cities, insisting that the authorities launch a thorough investigation into Espinosa's murder, speculating that his profession is the fundamental reason for his death. Underlining that, it is fundamental that the investigations privilege the line on his journalistic work, in particular because the victim denounced in various occasions in recent days that he was being followed and harassed in this capital. Journalist rights defenders say the authorities have inclined to ignore or actively negate investigating the murders or threats made against journalists, forcing many, like Espinosa, to go into self-exile. In recent years, we've helped 70 journalists to go into self-exile to Mexico City for reasons of security, violence in their communities. They are trained, they're given post-traumatic stress therapy, they're given legal aid, and many of them return. While Espinosa will not return, rights groups and fellow journalists continue to protest, demanding that effective measures are taken and implemented to protect not only media workers, but the right to free speech. Clayton Cantelosur, Mexico City. And we turn live now to our correspondent, Clayton Kahn. He's there in Mexico City, and he's been following this case. Clayton, what's the latest on the case and the allegations also that the governor of Veracruz may have been in some way involved? Well, Cody, the authorities here in Mexico City have been leaking unofficially uh, to a lot of the local press that the five victims who died on Friday night in this multiple homicide uh, actually knew their uh, murderers. Uh, there is video that has been released uh, today that shows three uh, presumed suspects leaving the apartment on Friday, uh, taking a vehicle of, of one of the presumed victims, uh, and later it was abandoned in a different part of the city. Uh, so the authorities have also been uh, leaking this information, saying that the, the victims were actually holding a party on the Thursday night uh, prior to their assassination. However, uh, the, the neighbors and, and people in the area have said that that is not true. They, they discredit the authorities' uh, uh, allegations uh, in, in terms of, of, of those points. Uh, and so uh, the, the, most of the investigation has been focusing on that. The authorities have also said that uh, the, is losing weight, that the investigation should focus on the role of uh, the journalistic work of Ruben Espinosa uh, because of this new information that they are providing. Uh, as we said, that Javier Duarte, who was the governor of the state of Veracruz, uh, was denounced by Ruben Espinosa as well as one of the victims uh, for years past, since 2013. Javier Duarte came into power in 2010, and since then, 14 journalists have been killed in his state, uh, many pointing to the, to the corruption, like I said in my report, between the organized crime and the state. And you know, Clayton, a lot of the focus here is focusing on Ruben Espinosa. He seems to be the most well-known journalist out of those killed. But there were other people killed. Other families are without their loved ones, other people without their colleagues. Tell us more about those other victims who have also uh, been killed. Well, there were four women who were killed. Uh, one was a domestic worker who has not been identified at 40 years of age. Uh, another who was Nadia Vera, 
of 32 years of age, who was an activist in Veracruz, who also denounced uh, accusations, who denounced these threats that she said she had received by state authorities in Veracruz. And she was a friend of Ruben Espinosa. Uh, there was also a Colombian woman that the authorities here in Mexico City uh, keep alluding to. Uh, her name is Nicole, uh, although that has not been officially made public, who was 19 years of age. And a woman named Yesenia Quiroz, who was 18 years old and a makeup artist. Uh, it is not clear what the relationship of all these people, all these women to Ruben Espinosa was. We know clearly that Nadia Vera uh, was a close friend of his, uh, but at this point it's not clear. But again, we want to underscore that, that Nadia Vera was uh, an activist who in 2012 in her activism in, in a protest uh, then against the current president Enrique Peña Nieto was um, received uh, uh, beatings in, a, in, a, in this protest and had denounced it. Eight months ago, she said in a video in a, in a local media that uh, she felt threatened by the state authorities and that any any actions against her, any threats, uh, any violence committed against her, she would hold the state authorities of Veracruz responsible, specifically Javier Duarte, the governor. And he was a fellow journalist, Clayton, so I think it's important whenever a, a journalist is killed like this for solidarity from all journalists. How are, are journalists at international press organizations and others, uh, the Inter-American Press Association, how are they reacting to this brutal murder? Well, here in Mexico, uh, a lot of the photojournalists, there's actually a collective of photojournalists uh, who worked alongside with uh, Ruben Espinosa, they are obviously denouncing the actions, they're demanding justice. Uh, they organized some of the protests this past weekend. It's still unclear if they're going to organize protests this week. Uh, the international press in general has denounced the activities or the, the assassination, the multiple uh, homicide, and they've been calling on the authorities to hold a very quick, rapid, uh, truthful investigation to find out what the cause of uh, and the motive of this multiple assassination uh, was. Um, but it's important to underscore that the local press here, aside from these photojournalists who are connected to, to Ruben Espinosa, as well as some of other critical media outlets, the local press in general has been uh, consuming uh, and, and uh, reproducing a lot of the speculation that has been unofficially uh, uh, filtrated uh, to the press by the authorities, uh, insinuating that some of these women who were also killed uh, on, on the Friday night uh, actually had some sort of connection to organized crime, insinuating in very subtle ways uh, that they that they were perhaps involved in illicit activities. Um, but most of the, the international press uh, has denounced that. And the Inter-American uh, Press Association has also denounced the assassination, calling on a quick and speedy and truthful investigation. As we know, that association uh, has not always uh, been on the side of, of demanding justice here in, in Mexico uh, and has also been critical in, in other countries. Uh, but overall, the international press has, has de is demanding justice, just like a lot of the, uh, the local press here, but uh, some of the other local press is not. All right, Clayton Kahn reporting with the latest on uh, what is a tragic case. Uh, the death of a fellow journalist there in Mexico City. Clayton, thank you. Thank you.